Good morning students, I'm Mr. Buscherini and for our lesson today we're going to talk about physical quantities. For this first lesson in the unit about uh, measurement in units, we first have to introduce the concept of what is a physical quantity. So the uh, learning objective of this very short lesson will be for you to be able to define what is a physical quantity. And in order to do that, we're going to talk about you. Or well, let's talk about the typical ISF student. Now, uh, if I ask you to describe one of your classmates, you might uh, focus on several aspects of this person. Uh, physical uh, aspects, also aspects of his own personality. So you might talk about whether that person is smart or not, if he or she has a sense of humor, uh, how tall this person is, what shoe size does this person wear, how much does he weigh, uh, does he have a temperature, I mean, the, 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 does he have a fever, and so on and so forth. Okay, these are all things that we can say about a person. The important thing is some of these things are physical quantities, and we're going to see which one are, and others are not physical quantities. Now, uh, as I will say many, many times, physics can also be viewed as the science of measurement. I mean, uh, measurement is important in all sciences, but it's mostly is uh, pivotal in physics. So, um, when we say physical quantity, we always refer to something that you can measure. Now, measure is really the key word here. And when we talk about measure, we're going also to talk about the measuring tools. You can see a few here. You can see an electric balance. You can see a ruler. You can see a conical flask. All tools that we're going to, or maybe you already learned how to use them, but we're going to use over and over again in our classes. So getting back to that description of a typical ISF student. Now we listed a series of uh, features, the height, the shoe size, etc. But based on our definition of physical quantity, something that we can measure, it's obvious that some of these are a physical quantities and, so, and the others are not a physical quantity. And I really want you now to think a minute, just pause this video and think, based on that definition, which ones do you think are physical quantities and which are not? Now, not surprisingly, height is something that we can measure. So this is a physical quantity. We measure the shoe size. The shoe size. We know how big your uh, the shoes you're wearing. So that is a physical quantity. Sense of humor, on the other hand, it's something which we cannot measure. Uh, people might disagree on whether someone has or has not a sense of humor. And this is also because you cannot measure. Now intelligence, and I know here uh, we can spark a little debate whether intelligence is something we can or we cannot measure. And many of you might think about the QI test, no? The intelligent course, or oh, IQ, sorry, test, QI is in Italian. Um, actually, as far as I'm concerned, intelligence is not something you can measure. Weight you can measure with a bathroom scale. Beauty, beauty is in the eye of a beholder. It's not something you can measure. Happiness. The level you're happy is not something you can measure. And finally, temperature is a physical quantity because it can be measured with a thermometer. And this really leads us to how we're going to represent this uh, physical quantities. Now, so we have a physical quantities, and these physical quantities will be given by their name, like height, weight, temperature, by value, because of course, when you measure them, then you will come out with a number, and this number will be attached to a unit of measurement. We're going to have a whole unit, a whole, sorry, a whole video just about unit of measurement. So every time we write a physical quantities, we must not, never forget, forget, sorry, these three things. The name of a quantity, its value, and the corresponding unit. Of course, when we go into the definition of a physical quantity, uh, like length or mass, we also must be able to tell some ways to measure that. Just the height, at least right now, is 192 centimeters. So as you can see, I wrote here my, the name of you, 
and the uh, and the unit and come out with this number. For instance, I could have used a measuring tool like a tape measure. To close this very short video about physical quantities, we also have to learn how to represent them correctly, especially because sometimes we might measure directly a physical quantity, again, like time or distance, but sometimes a physical quantity will come from two or more measurements combined. So how do we combine them? Let's look at an example, something we're going to meet later on. So let's talk about Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt, um, when he set his record, called it a distance of 100 meters. So this is our first quantity in a time of 9.58 seconds. Um, so how do we find the average speed? So let's use now the formula speed, a formula that links speed, distance and time formula that probably you already met before. And here it is for you, speed equals to distance divided by time. At this point, we feed in, we substitute two, and you see how I wrote both the number and the corresponding unit, and time is 9.58 seconds. At this point, I work out my math. 100 divided by 9.58 is 10.4 and many decimals. I decided to round up. We're going to discuss how to round up later on. And how do I read this? We can read as meters over seconds or meters per second. This is one way to write uh, the physical quantity speed. You see, name of a quantity, value and unit. But this year we'll learn also a different way of writing, especially these units. Um, and this is something you'll have to use starting next year. But let's start getting acquainted with that. So again, 10.4 meters and 1 over second, because this is what it means right here. Now it's 1 over second. You can write it also at seconds to the power. So that's all for today. Goodbye to next lesson from Mr. Boscarini.